Well, good morning, church family and guests. Uh, welcome to this time of worship. Uh, today is the first Sunday, and we will celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And so if you will have some bread and some juice readily available, that when we get to that part of the worship, that you'll be able to join in with that celebration. Uh, today, uh, we have some awesome music. Uh, the joint choir of Centenary and St. Paul that ministered during the, this year's Martin Luther King celebration that was held right here in this sanctuary. They will be ministering. Uh, the women's chorale that will be ministering and uh, the mass choir will be ministering as, as well. So we got some awesome music, some awesome music ready for you today. So let us be in the spirit and attitude of praise and worship for this is the day that God has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Would you bow your head as we invite God's presence into our time of worship? Eternal and all wise God, our heavenly father, we come to worship you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to worship in these days. And we thank you for the opportunity to be able to worship and to see our sanctuary, as well as to hear our choirs and, and other mu music that we've enjoyed over the last few months and years. Hear our prayers that we ask you to enter into our sanctuary, into, into our homes and make them a sanctuaries of praise and guide and, and bless and guide all that we do in this day. Help us to focus our attention on you and you alone. Help nothing to distract us from worshiping you and receiving the blessing that you have in store. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right, church family and guests. Uh, anybody got a birthday in June? Anybody? Anybody got a birthday in June? Any, anybody? Anybody? Well, I know a few. And so we want to uh, wish to all of our June birthday, uh, all of our members and our guests who have a birthday in June, a uh, very, very happy June birthday. Uh, how about wedding anniversaries? Wedding anniversaries. Anybody? Anybody? Well, Victor and Malika, if y'all raise y'all's hand uh, on the 24th, uh, it'll be 16 years. Uh, Kevin and Renita, if y'all raise y'all's hands on the 15th, it'll be 19 years. Uh, Clifton and Evangeline, if y'all can raise y'all's hands on the 13th, it'll be 50 years in uh, on uh, June the 13th. And Cliff also has a birthday in June. And praise God, I know they can lift their hands. Uh, brother and sister Kenner on June 29th, 52 years. And so we give God praise for all of those uh, wedding anniversaries. And uh, God be with them and bless them. They're marvelous examples of Christian uh, uh, discipleship as they grow together in love. And thanks be to God for them. And as always, I always acknowledge and remember those whose loved ones have preceded them in death. You shared the marvelous life with them, and now they have gone on before. And we let you know that we remember them as well. Thanks be to God. This is going to be an exciting week uh, here at St. Paul. And uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, uh, keep, in, keep in mind and put on your calendar for next Sunday, next Sunday, next Sunday, it's the second Sunday, we always recognize a very special group of people. And those, those persons are those who have graduated from high school, graduated from college, or have completed their advanced degrees. So we wanna, we're gonna recognize them uh, next Sunday. We will say a word uh, next Sunday morning at 11 in our time of worship. And then at 3 p.m., 3 p.m., uh, we will have a, a great celebration for them on our upper, in our upper parking lot. And uh, we've got, we're working out all the details. We've got it all planned. And we'll look forward to having you here. Now, uh, we do ask that uh, you would wear your mask, stay in your car. Also, uh, remember the social distancing. So we'll, we'll help you with that. And uh, be sure that while you're on this, this site, uh, you'll be safe. But you'll also be able to celebrate uh, these accomplishments in your young people who have completed uh, their high school and will be going on to additional education, who also have completed uh, the college and university experience. And then there's, some, there's one who has completed uh, their professional experience, the postgraduate work. So... Thanks be to God for the opportunity. We thanks, give thanks to God for our head, higher education and campus ministry group who they keep a close eye on that and they will be here to help celebrate these wonderful people. Be here uh, on the campus to celebrate the on graduation Sunday. Thank you for your generous giving. Uh, thank you that uh, through this time, you still remember God in your giving. Um, you are some generous people. You are turning out in this pand pandemic to, to give generously. And so we, we give you thanks for that. Uh, I know, I know that uh, it, it's challenging for all of us uh, to give more challenging than it is for others. But uh, thank you for what you do. And uh, if you're not able to give as you would like, listen, we understand. Let your faith be your guide and know that we are praying for you, that God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory. We got a whole bunch of Bible to confess over you as you are faithful in your giving, in your stewardship of time and talent and in giving. Let me also announce uh, before I go forward, um, if you are able if you are able to uh, serve in our food pantry, we are going to need you to show up and give me a call here at the church or send me an email and uh, let me know if you are available on Wednesdays from 1.30 to 3. Now we may need some time from some of us at another time 
as we have uh, on Mondays, we go and pick up the food and bring it back and uh, shelve it and stock it. Uh, we, we are going to need uh, your help in that. Uh, so if you'll contact me, I will be sure to get the information that you need, get you to the, connect you with the right people, uh, get you the appropriate training that, we, that you will need. Uh, I assure you that we're going to practice safe distancing and we're going to uh, keep you safe while you're on our campus. But we do need that. It's a big need in our community and we invite you and I pray that as God gives you the opportunity, Wednesday, 1.30 to 3, probably 1 o'clock, 2, 3, uh, 1 o'clock to get organized and set up and then to 3. So if you can do that, would you pray about it? Uh, and we would be, it'd be just a wonder, wonderful to have you here. Thank you for doing that. Now we receive God's tithe and his offerings. Well, it's prayer time, y'all. And God is the God, our God is the God who hears and answers prayers. Uh, you know what's going on. You know what's happening in our world, this pandemic. You know what's happening in our world uh, with the killing of George Floyd, as well as others. He's not the only one. And then we've seen a lot of pictures of uh, persons being brutalized uh, on the street. Uh, and we want to pray for our police officers, our law enforcement, uh, that they will rise up to their best selves and uh, respond to the training that they've been given so that uh, they can help keep the peace. We want to pray for our nation. Uh, we do need leadership in the worst way. And I'm, I ask you to pray that God would raise up some bold leaders, raise up some leaders who will take the task, those persons who violate their oaths of offices, their oaths of office. So please, uh, let's be in a spirit and attitude of prayer. Uh, we probably, I know we've lost some other people through, through the uh, COVID-19, uh, COVID-19. Yeah, those numbers continue to go up. And uh, so let's be in prayer. Uh, as I did my reading this week, I, I, I see a number of young people, 30 years old or so, uh, who contracted that disease and, and it took them out. It, uh, so uh, we are learning new, more and more things about it uh, almost every day. And so don't forget those uh, essential employees, those front frontline workers uh, who not only must go out, but they want to go out in order to serve you and to serve me. So would you keep them in your prayers? Uh, join me in prayer today. Heavenly Father, as we come to you, we come to you as the God who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who is the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the God who created all that was and is, the God who will be here when we're gone, the God who will meet us in glory when we leave this earth, the God who provides for our every need, the God who watches over us, late into the midnight hour while we slumber and while we sleep. The God who takes the little bit that we have and multiplies it into to all that it needs to be. The God who forgives us when we go astray. The God who, who says to us that you love us even when we act in unlovable ways. The God who punishes us when we do wrong and yet takes us up into your arms when we confess and come back to you. We call upon you as the only one true awesome God in this universe. And we thank you for the opportunity and privilege that you've given to us of being your children. We thank you that you have called us one day out of darkness into the marvelous light. You have turned our lives around. And even though we have not been perfect, you have been perfecting us, working on us along the way so that we are better now than we were in the past and we'll be better in the future than we are now because you work on us and perfect us. Thank you, dear God, for being that kind of God. We celebrate the, the birthdays, we celebrate the anniversaries, we celebrate the graduates as we give you thanks for all of those persons. 
and we ask that you would watch over all of those families uh, who've been affected by the COVID pandemic, uh, all of those families who have lost loved ones, all of those first responders who go out and serve uh, even at the risk of their own health, but thank you that you are and have taken care of them. Thank you for the opportunities that you give to us to serve this community in, in a variety of ways. And we ask you to continue to empower us with both the finances and the people to be able to serve this community. We thank you and ask your blessing upon the George Floyd family and all who have lost loved ones, all who have been victimized by violence in one way or another. We pray your blessings upon them all, that you would give them strength, peace, comfort, wisdom for the living of these days. We thank you for our law enforcement agencies and ask you to watch over them and make them truly just, uh, help them to rise up to their best selves. We ask now that you would watch over those places where there are those who see destruction and violence as the way to go. And they have no commitment to the cause. They simply want to keep up ruckus and destruction. So Heavenly Father, help us to, and help those who are on the front lines of demonstrating and protesting to, pro protesting, to be able to not only stay peaceful themselves, but help to identify when things seem, well, when, they, when things may get out, tend to get out of hand, and help them to do what they could do in order to turn the temperature down. We ask that you would be with those who have special need today. In the midst of everything that's going on, they have lost loved ones. In the midst of everything that's going on, they're still trying to figure out how to pay bills. In the midst of everything that's going on, they're still trying to figure out how to be in contact with their loved ones who are either in the hospital or, or extended care facilities. I'm praying for them now. I'm praying that you would uh, give peace to them and provide ways that they may be able to connect with their loved ones. And we ask you to use all of the hospitals and those extended care facilities to provide first class, excellent, loving, and mercy-filled care so that these patients and these persons may have a quality and dignity of life. I know that you're a God that hears and answers prayers. And I believe that you are hearing this prayer and all the prayers that your people are praying wherever they may be. Thank you for this time of worship. Bless it. Give to me power to preach today. and Give to me power to continue to try to lead this congregation to be faithful even in these days and times. Help us. Help us to come through not only surviving, but thriving. Now, we are still a church and your kingdom still must come on earth as it is in heaven. So help us to continue to, to live out our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Help us to do that. And as you do, we shall carefully give your name the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And 
he that walketh in the valley of the dead shall in no wise be entangled by God's hand he shall be kept if I go into the heavens he knows if I go into the deepest depths he knows so no matter what may come my way I'm covered by his blood Even when Satan seems to rage By his hand I'm hidden safe I'm in his safety safety the safety of the Lord nothing can stop me nor can you draw me why because I'm safety I'm in the safety of the Lord yes I am Ooh, yes I am I'm in the safety He covers me, he covers me, yes, I'm resting in the safety of the Lord, oh, he is the captain, yes, of my soul, oh, yes, he is my portrait.
Well, church family, uh, you have your Bibles. Uh, I'm going to ask you to read them later. 
uh, if as you have time, read the entire book of Job, uh, because I think uh, Job offers to us a word of encouragement, uh, a word of instruction, uh, and he understands his life understands where we are. So I want to talk about for a few minutes, even now, trust your unseen sovereign God. Even now, trust your unseen sovereign God. COVID deaths exceeding 108,000 in the United States and 386,000 in the world. Black female was killed while in her own home, shot eight times by police at the wrong house. A black man was killed while jog jogging by three men with racist words on their lips. Another black man handcuffed and on the streets of Minneapolis while being respectful and crying out, I can't breathe as a police officer kept his knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Three other officers just simply watched. Peaceful demonstrations by unarmed marchers against injustice uh, have been met with military type force. Black people have record unemployment much higher than our fellow white citizens. The financial consequences due to this preventable pandemic is massive. Seemingly no cure is on the horizon. And if a cure is found soon, you know who you do know who will be the last to, to get it. The, the inconceivable happened in November of 2016. Incompetence in the White House at a level never before experienced. And even today, still about 40 percent of the people, including most of our major corporations, law, large businesses, billionaires and white American religion approve of this incompetence. Even the righteous like Job trying to live the moral, ethical and social demands of Scripture are suffering. It would be nice. It would be appreciated. It would be welcomed if God Almighty would show up, speak up and say something, do something to stop all of this craziness. Instead, nothing, no word from heaven, no thundering voice, no miraculous acts, silence. Where are you, Lord? Don't you see, Lord? Can't you feel our pain, Lord? How long, Lord? Why us, Lord? Come on, Lord. Let evil know whose side you are on. Come on, Lord. You are sovereign. You can do whatever you choose, whenever you choose, however you choose, for whomever you choose, with whomever you choose. Do something, Lord. Don't you see what we're going through down here? Don't you care? Believe it or not, that was the biblical life of Job. Job faced back to back to back tragedies. He, he was a wealthy man. He was a man who was right with God. Even God endorsed his rightness. He was a family man with a wife, seven sons and three daughters. He was the greatest man of all the, the East. Then in one day, he lost all of his wealth. In one day, robbers stole it all. In one day, all his children died. And on another day, his health failed. His wife saw his suffering and wished death upon him rather than it, him having to endure, his having to endure such suffering. His friends misdiagnosed the situation for things going so badly in his life. They came to sit with him, but to sit in judgment of him. So Job pleaded his innocence to all who would listen and even to God. It would it, it would be he, he said it would be better if he had died in infancy than to live this kind of life. God had forsaken him. Why would God cause a righteous man like himself to suffer like he was suffering? Job seemed sure 
Job seemed sure that if he could come face to face with God, he could argue his case with God and convince God that he was innocent and that what was happening to him that he thought God was causing was wrong. He would charge God with being the bad guy. But God kept silent. Didn't do a thing. That's Job. But if I'm not too far off, that's our lives. We are in our Job-like season with all of these things that's going on. And as soon as it seems like that we are able to, all right, we've gotten used to that. Here comes something else. Or as soon as it seems like we've adjusted, here comes something else. It seems like we are living in our Job moment. moment. This happens, that happens. Here comes something else. Here comes something else. And before you know it, we see we might be like Job. Where are you, God? Let's, let's have a conversation about this, God. Let's let's talk about justice and you you're being a just God. Let's 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 talk about this. Well, I tell you, one of the things I like about God is that God can prepare us beforehand. And I think in the story of Job, our God reminds us that even though he is unseen, he is sovereign and that he is our unseen sovereign God. God and that he is worthy of our trust. And may I try to encourage all of us today, even me, even now to trust our unseen sovereign God. He may not be seen, but he is at work and he's sovereign. Everything works according to his plan. So what do we learn from Joseph, uh, from Job? about this unseen God. Well, for me, the first thing I learned is from, from chapter one all the way through chapter 42, God knows. No matter what we are going through, God knows about it. Chapter one, it, good times. By the end of chapter one, bad times. Chapter two, eh relatively good times. But then at the end of chapter two, bad times from chapter three all the way to chapter 38, nothing but bad, suffering, accusations and all of that. And Job needed to know where God was. Well, I need, I need to remind you that Job teaches me that God knows what we're going through, as bad as things are, and as, as much as it seems as if God is silent and you can't see what God is up to, up to, keep your trust in your unseen sovereign God. Now, it will be tempting to fall out with God and try to face your life your way or reinterpret God because things are so haywire. But keep trusting your unseen sovereign God. Don't reinterpret God. Take God as God is. God knows what you are going through. Trust your unseen. Trust your sovereign God. Well, the second thing I, I understand, uh, I learned from Job's life and experience. The first is God knows, but the second is all right, now it's going to hurt. God allows. God allows. This may be hard to grasp. And it's, it's been the question of evil for so many, many years. Why does God permit evil? Well, I can't answer that. All I need to can tell you is that God allows certain situations in our, well, God allows all situations in our lives. And I'll tell you in a minute, what I, what I think, why I think he does. Now, in, ver in chapter one, verses eight through 12 in Job and chapter two, verses one through six, here is God and his heavenly host having a meeting and they were all getting along and Satan barges in. So Satan has been on the earth doing his devilment, doing his dirt. And God says, well, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, 
a blameless and un upright man who fears God and shuns evil. I've often said, God, why'd you raise my, you know, Joe, why you raise my name? What's, what have I done to you? Well, I believe that he could raise jo uh, Job's name because he knows that Job's going to come through this thing. Job's going to learn the lesson. And I've often asked uh, my Bible study students, can God raise your, man your name? W are you of the kind of faith that God can say, Satan, have you considered that one? Well, Satan says, well, he gives a response. Well, look, uh, in, in my evaluation, I'm going to say it my way. Job would be a fool. Look how much you have blessed him. All that he, get, he has. Mm -mm. <laughs> He'd be a fool. However, God, if you let me, just let me at him. Take all that he has, his stuff, his material possessions. I can get Job to curse you to your faith. And God says, let's see. Go ahead. God permits it. Well, that didn't really work. God, uh, he, Satan took all the stuff, but Job still stood strong. So God and his heavenly hosts were in a, another meeting. And here comes Satan busting in again. Have you considered my servant Job, says God again, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil. Still, he holds fast to his integrity, although... <laughs> You incited me, says God, against him to destroy him without cause. Now Satan's response was, I tell you what, you can take all the stuff, but how about his health? Let me attack his health. And God says, all right, go ahead. It's a hard idea to grasp. God allows things to happen, even bad things. God did not cause it to happen. So let us not blame him that he is the cause of all of this mess that we're in. And why does he allow such tragedies to happen to his people? What kind of sick God is he? He's not sick. What joy does God get out of our suffering when he has the power? Uh, you remember, he has the power. He has the power to prevent it and change it. Your unseen God has the power to change it, but he doesn't. He is sovereign. Why? Well, because God is sovereign, God can improve our faith in whatever ways God chooses. So evil, sometimes good, sometimes is God, are God's ways to help prove that we are the legitimate people of faith. But also, I learned that God sets limits. I know that our unseen sovereign God sets limits. Verses 12 and then verse 6. Verse 12 of chapter 1 and verse 6 of chapter 2. Satan was given parameters. Don't touch his life. Don't touch his life. Take the stuff. But don't touch his life. His health, but don't touch his life. This always encourages me in, in my latter years. God allows things to happen, but he puts boundaries on those things so that they will not be more than I, by faith in him, can handle. If I cannot handle it, God will not let it happen to me. He puts limits and it may seem unbearable. And sometimes it does. It may seem that God stretches us to our limits, but God will not allow more to happen to you or to me than we are able to bear. Evil does not come from God. Evil comes from Satan. But God knows how to put a limit on it so that it will be so that we will be able by our faith in God to handle it. And Job had to learn that. Well, what what else do I know about our unseen and sovereign God from from Job? Well, God waits. Chapter three to chapter 40. Job has to endure. God not saying a word, 
God not moving apparently in any and uh, not moving in any visible way. God not speaking up for him. God not hushing Hit those critics that come to sit to, to have an idea and pontificate about what's going on. God says nothing. And Job has to endure the loss of his wealth and children, endure his own sense of God having done him wrong, endure painful suffering, endure accusations of his friends and endure loss of community prestige all the way to chapter 40. To be sure, God could have stopped it right away. Yes, he could. But God waited while Job struggled in his crisis of faith. God does that. And God waits and we hate it. Move, God. We're not a fan of waiting. Move. Do it now. As a matter of fact, probably the, the biggest problem that we have in this pandemic is, is our impatience. You know, uh, everybody wants to have their way. Do it their way. Or uh, we don't have time to wait. We just move and, and, and we just don't have time to wait. And many of us don't have time to wait on God so that God can help us and, and teach us something. God does what God does and wait and we and he waits. May not say a word. He waits. See how we will handle it. But that's because our unseen sovereign God is a God who teaches. Verses 38 to 42, I've learned from Job. God takes Job to school. Up to this time, Job and his friends have been mouthing off. They've been doing all the talking, all the accusations. Now it was God's turn to respond. And you know all the things that God challenged Job with. Where were you? Where were you when I hung the stars? Where were you when I scooped out the land? Where were you when I put the fish where they are? Hey, tell me how the fish go through the through the through the water. How do the birds fly? Tell me, Job, you so bad. You want to get in my face? You want to accuse me? You want to talk to me? All right, let's let's get on the same level. But you first got to pass this exam. And God, through all of that uh, 40 chapters, was teaching Job that, Job, you can trust me. You can trust me. Job, you can trust me. And then it, it, there's a marvelous text, Job 42 and verses one through five. Job says, I know, God, you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You can do everything and whatever you want to do, you can do it. You ask, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? That's that's me coming to you, you know, thinking I know something and I didn't. Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please. Let me speak. You say it. I will question you and you shall answer me. And now Job says, gives his testimony. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Hallelujah. Job learned his lesson. <clears throat> Job affirmed God's absolute sovereignty over his life. And he says, now I see you. I couldn't see you through all of this, but now I know you were there. Now I know that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Now I know you are in charge. Now I know that this was for my good. I see you now, God. I didn't know. But now that you have brought me through this, I see you now, God. You are sovereign even over my life. I see that now. When we know that God is sovereign, we know that God through our good times and suffering. Listen to me, church family. God is teaching us something about ourselves and about him. Job understood that his unseen sovereign God, when he came to the end of this situation, 
God was teaching him something. But thanks be to God, our unseen and sovereign God never lets it go on always. But it comes to an end, Job 42 and 7, that it comes to an end. Suffering came to an end. I'm so glad trouble don't last always. And what is so awesome about God is that God knows when to end things. We often say around here that God's timing is not our timing. And yet when we want something done, we want it done at our timing. Listen, God's timing is not our timing, but God's timing is always the right thing. So it comes to an end. This too shall pass. Well, I also learned from Job is that God affirms. In the text, at the end, chapter 42 and verses 7 and 9, still got these uh, so-called friends hanging around. But God endorses, affirms Job to say he was right and y'all were wrong. He was right and y'all were wrong. My servant Job was right. Now, I know Job had, had gone through a whole lot. But he certainly wasn't wasn't guilty of what they accused him of being guilty of. But he stayed with God. He continued with God and God affirmed him. And God will do that for you. God will do that for you. The Bible says that he'll make your enemies your footstool. God will affirm your righteousness. And then the final thing here as I close. What I know about our unseen sovereign God, God restores. Following all of this awful time of suffering, God restored by giving Job more than he had before. All right, preacher, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hope. Time out, time out, time out, time out. Flag on the play. Listen, you can replace house. You can replace wealth. You can replace health. All of those can be restored. But how about life? Seven children, seven sons and three daughters. How do you call that being, quote, more blessed at the end than the beginning? I and many of us struggle with that. But here's my feeble attempt to come to answer that. When I trust my unseen sovereign God, I know that their loss was in his plan. So rather than bemoan and not move forward, I move forward because my trust is in my unseen sovereign God. Many of us have lost loved ones and maybe we have taken a hiatus from God. And believing that God cannot bring us back to that joy level or cannot offer to us other individuals who can walk alongside with us and who can not so much replace, but who can who who can come instead of in the shoes of. And we get angry with God, not knowing that our sovereign God can do whatever, whenever, however to whomever, for whomever, and with whomever, that our God can do that. And when you put your trust in the sovereign God, then you know that nothing works outside of his plan. And you have to say, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, and blessed, says Job, be the name of the Lord. Now, this Job is important, at least for me, in these days of pandemic and demonstrations and violence and deaths and economic hardships and ignorance at the highest levels. It's important for me anyway to put and keep my trust in my unseen sovereign God. I know he's at work when even I don't see him. 
I know he knows what we are going through. I know he sets limits to what evil can do. I know he teaches us to trust him through the good times and the bad times. I know he ends evil at his own timing. And I know he will affirm the goodness of his children over and against the badness of Satan's evil. And I know he will in restore what I have lost. It would be for those who do not know their unseen and sovereign God to get for, the, for them, it would be easy for them to give up and to say, what kind of God is this? Well, we sing in our tradition, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And so I encourage you, don't lose your faith. When you see all this lunacy going on, I don't know another way of saying it, craziness, lunacy going on. When you see all of that going on, <clears throat> don't lose your faith. Keep your trust in, an unseen, in your unseen sovereign God. Gracious God, as we go through our Job-like experiences, help us to trust you and give, give to you and, and put our lives in your hands and allow you to set dates and times and situations and that we will follow you because we know that whatever you do is good. We are reminded that you said in your word that all things works to work together for good to those who love you and who are called according to your purpose. And some things may not look good, but you're working them out for our good. We ask that you would help us in these days of pandemic and lunacy and, and all of that. Help us, help us, God, help us to keep trusting in you. And don't let us fall to, this, to the tactics and of Satan, but help us to do and still trust you and hold on to our faith. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm asking you to reach out to all who are listening to me and to, to our world and help us to see you at work and that seeing you at work help us to trust your wisdom and your understanding and your knowledge of what really we need. Help us then to learn from it, that we may grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and grow into his image. Thank you and watch over us and keep us in Jesus' name, amen. Of your 
mercy that we are not consumed because like a pastor say all night they are new every morning great is our faithfulness You wanted me to do. Oh, yes, you be. Oh, you've been so faithful. You never repay your love for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of the way. Turn my darkness into day. You bring my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I weaken. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness into day. You bring my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope and my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak in the world. I can never repay you, Lord. And you set me free. How you went away out of nowhere. Turn my darkness into day. Bring my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak I can never repay your love for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me free. How you went away out of nowhere. Turn my darkness into day. You bring my joy in the time of sorrow. Oh.
Help me celebrate a faithful God. Help me celebrate a faithful God. He's not been faithful to you. I don't need you, but help me celebrate. If he's been faithful to you. Yeah, if he's been better to you than you've been to yourself, somebody needs to celebrate him. He's been so faithful. Now, why don't you help me celebrate this choir? Why don't you help me celebrate and give God thanks for this ministry of music, these this choir, these musicians, these, this director. God has certainly been faithful. Is it true that he has been better to us than we have been to ourselves? Let me see if I got an honest house. Has he been better to us than we have been to him? You may not have lived long enough, but I've lived long enough to have people cut me off because, you know, they don't like what I did or said. Anybody ever been cut off by God? No. No. Even though we should have been, he's been faithful. When he adopted us as his child, he took us just as we are, and he'll keep us until... He calls us home. Well, I hope that you have secured some bread and some juice so that we might celebrate uh, together the sacrament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And hear now these words. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin, who seek to live in peace with one another. And therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient, an obedient church. We have not done your will. We've broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news, beloved. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. As we come to the communion. It was on the night in which Jesus was betrayed that he took bread. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of Jesus Christ broken for you. Eat in remembrance that he gave his life for you and be thankful. Take and eat. And if you will uncover the cup or access the, the juice of whatever you have. It was on the night in which Jesus was betrayed that he took the cup. He lifted the cup and he gave thanks to you, O God. And, now, and he said to his disciples, this is the new covenant in my blood that is poured out for you and for many. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. The, the blood of Jesus shed for you. Take and drink. Each time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do so 
in remembrance of him. And we, in taking it, proclaim, preach the gospel message that he suffered, bled, and died for us. And we will do that until his coming again. This we do together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks to one and all for uh, joining us in worship. Please don't forget the next Sunday we will celebrate our graduates and we would invite you to come at three o'clock to the, the campus where we will uh, have it all laid out and decked out for our graduates. And we will be back here for worship on next Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Uh, don't forget our Bible studies on Wednesday se- uh, noon and at 7, prayer time 6 a.m., 6, uh, 6.15 p.m. We would invite you. Now, if you have any questions or if you've made a decision for Christ at any time of any kind, uh, let us know. Be in contact at uh, info at stpaulumcws.org. Be in contact with us so that we might celebrate whatever decision that you've made. And if there's a question that you have, we'd be, uh, it would just uh, please us to be able to answer that. I hope that you will have a, a, a blessed and great week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace.